Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to be doing a product review from a company called Viver. They've sent me a small foundry furnace and they want me to try it out. This is not a sponsored video. They're not paying me in any way to say anything in particular. They've sent me the furnace and in return I'm doing this video for you and giving you my honest opinion of the product. If you're not familiar with Viver, do go check out their website. They have a lot of tools that will cover just about anything that you're interested in. But for today, I'm going to scroll through the arts and crafts section and I'm going to go down and find the furnace that they sent me so I can give you a look at it. So this is the actual unit and I'm just going to take a couple of minutes to scroll through the pictures that accompany the description. I should remind you that I am in Canada so what I'm looking at here is the Canadian site so all the prices that you're seeing are in Canadian dollars. As you can see, the crucible is rated at 6 kilograms, which is roughly 13 pounds. But of course, you know, it, you're working with a volume. So in terms of aluminum, that converts to about maybe 4 pounds of aluminum, I'm guessing, if you fill it right up to the top. So here you see the actual box that they sent me. Uh, now I just need to open it up and uh, see if everything's in there. Actually, you'll just need to give me a minute while I figure out where I set my knife down. Actually, I'm working with a pretty small space here, so I think what I'm going to do is unpack everything, and then once everything's out of the box, we can have a closer look at what's actually in the kit. The large bag that you see here is the ceramic powder that you need to use to coat the inside of the furnace. And they've also sent the brush along to do that, so that's nice. The reason they don't coat it in the factory is because they're concerned about it cracking and falling off during shipping. The actual furnace is quite heavy. I was surprised at the gauge of sheet metal that they use to build it, so the, it's a pretty sturdy unit. Packed inside the furnace is a small fire brick that gets used to support the crucible, so that forms the base of the unit, and there's also the uh, nozzle for the burner in there. The tongs that come with the kit um, are a little flimsy. I'm not sure if you're going to see those again. I'm still thinking about it. And this is the actual burner pipe, and uh, again, I am really surprised at the gauge of metal that they used for this. I expected to see something that resembled a tin flute, but it is an actual piece of pipe and it'll withstand quite a bit of use. The lid comes with a frying pan style handle that gets mounted to the side and of course the screws are included. They didn't include a screwdriver, so I guess uh, you know, you'll have to come up with that. The crucible that comes with the kit is very heavy. Uh, it's a thick-walled crucible. Um, I'm not sure how that's going to work out. Uh, the crucibles that I've had in the past have been a lot thinner than that, so we'll see how it tests out. This is the hose that connects the propane tank to the burner unit. It comes with a regulator so you can adjust the amount of pressure going to the burner and it also has the quick connect uh, feature to the tank so you don't need any wrenches for that part of it. And finally it does come with instructions to help you assemble all of this. Thank you. 
so this is the next day I've coated the inside of the furnace I've let it dry 24 hours and now I'm just running the uh, furnace at a really low heat to fully dry out the coating and get rid of all the moisture there was a lot of steam coming out of this furnace when I first started it up so I'm leaving it on low for a few minutes just to dry everything out The hose for the tank is good and long, so the tank is sitting a good eight feet away from the furnace, so it's very safe. You can see how I've built a makeshift casting area by just setting everything on a uh, metal shelf that I had. I used another metal shelf as a backboard to prevent any heat or splashing going towards the building. So there's no chance of a fire that way and the metal shelf should catch any drips that uh, fall away from the uh, ingot molds or out of the side of the crucible. The tag on the regulator says that it can go up to 30 pounds, but I am positive that I'm not going to need anywhere near that to get up to temperature. So again, it's, a, it's meant to put out quite a bit of heat. This is a couple of minutes later. I've turned the heat up a little bit. You can see how I'm already starting to get some color in the furnace. So here I'm a little bit further along. I've already charged the crucible with some of the small pieces that I had around and I'm just getting ready to uh, load up some long thin strips that I can literally just drop in from the top. I don't need to bother cutting those up. The description for this uh, furnace said that it heats up really fast and they weren't kidding. Um, I had basically an hour and a half between meetings this morning so I decided I would try to do a quick pour. I actually ran out of propane. I had time to go get propane, come back and start over and I still had about 15 minutes to spare to get to my next meeting so um, it uh, really is quick and it, uh, very efficient. Everything went well. So this is about 10 or 15 minutes later. All the aluminum is melted. It looks good. So uh, I'm ready to shut everything down and pour it into the ingot molds. The long-handled spoon that I'm using was not supplied. It's one of my forged spoons. Uh, basically, you just need to clean off all the uh, crud that doesn't melt and floats to the surface. So you, uh, it's called dross, and you clean that up and that gets you down to clean metal. And then from there, you grab the crucible with the tongs and uh, pour it into the molds. I use a spoon because I happen to have one, but normally I'm just trying to uh, scoop this stuff out with a bent piece of sheet metal. 
Now, I do have to apologize to the people at Viver. When I saw their tongs, uh, when I first took it out of the box, I thought to myself, you know, that's not going to make it in the video. <laughs> you know, this is a blacksmithing channel. After all, I don't want these crappy tongs. But then I thought about it, and I thought, well, I am supposed to be reviewing the product as it was sent to me, so I decided to uh, use the tongs that they supplied, and they worked fine. They were great. Uh, they were good and sturdy. The handles had just enough flex to grab the crucible and handle it carefully and safely, and it wasn't crushing uh, the sides of the crucible. So they were indeed very well designed for the purpose. So uh, again, I do apologize. Uh, I uh, made an error in judgment. Everything was fine. So here I am several hours later, everything's cold obviously, and I just want to have a look at everything and see how it held up. The actual furnace is great, the uh, coating uh, fired on really hard. It's still a hard surface on a soft base, so you can't go punching at it too much. It'll start to crack and fall apart, but it is a good solid coating. The crucible is still in one piece. I don't see any hairline cracks or anything, so it survived the firing very well. I was a little concerned about the uh, what appears to be a wooden handle on this lid, but it was fine. The uh, seal around the top of the furnace was really tight, so uh, there was enough air circulation around the handle that it actually kept it quite cold. And as you remember, I had the crucible about three quarters of the way full, and this is the amount of aluminum that came out of it. I'm guessing it weighs about a pound and a half or two, which is roughly a kilogram uh, for the metric people out there. And once again, the tongs uh, worked out fine uh, for a starter kit. They handled the crucible well. I didn't feel like I was losing control of it uh, while I was pouring or anything. I did find pouring the crucible towards myself a little bit awkward, but uh, at no time did I feel that I wasn't in control of it. So all in all, it worked fine. I would still improve to a better pair of tongs for handling the crucible, but if you're only doing casting once in a while, and especially if you're just dumping into ingot molds where it doesn't really matter how it's poured, um, these work just fine. So at the end of the day, I couldn't be happier with this entire kit, and I would certainly have no trouble recommending it to anyone who is interested in trying some casting and looking for a low-cost solution for getting into the trade. So I'd like to thank Viva for sending this along to me, and hopefully I'll have the opportunity to test some other products in the future. We'll see you next time. Hi, I'm Dennis and thanks for watching. If you have any questions, you can contact me by using the email address that I have shown here. If you like the channel and the work that I'm doing, please consider becoming a patron. Every dollar you contribute will bring me one step closer to being able to produce videos full time.